<clears throat> Hello and welcome to A Software Engineer Plays, the channel where a software engineer, that's me, plays games designed to teach you how to write code. Today we're taking a look at Rabbids Coding, which is available on Uplay for free. <clears throat> so, uh, Rabbids have invaded our spaceship and are doing damage, and we have to send them back to Earth. Some of them are wearing mind control helmets, and we can give them orders. So we're going to have a couple of blocks here to tell our rabbits what to do. Uh, and we place them under the start block and then hit the play button to run our code. And we got to do it in as few blocks as possible. So we take a look at the problem here. we got to get that rabbit to the washing machine. We see we've got to move forward three squares to get him there. So we go ahead and put in three forward blocks and into the washing machine he goes. Okay, so a big important part of software engineering is to fully scope out your, your problem statement. So in that case, it was move forward three blocks. In this case, let's see what the problem is. So we see we've got a, a bend in the road. Uh, so let's count those squares. We've got to move forward three and then turn and move another two to get to the washing machine. So we'll go ahead and put in the three forward blocks. And then we have to turn, but which way should we turn? So the default is right, but looking at it from the rabbit's perspective, we need to turn left. So let's go ahead and set that to left. Move forward another two blocks, and that should do it. Let's see. And into the washing machine. All right. So you see, taking the time beforehand to scope out the problem made our writing of the solution a little bit easier. Okay, so now we found out that there's a robot who's able to pick up rabbits and release them. So here we can see we've got a rabbit two squares in front of us, and then a turn, and then the washing machine. So we have to move forward to pick up the rabbit and then turn. We gotta do a left turn just like before, move forward one square, and then release. Let's see if this works. We <laughs> picked up the rabbit. And throw them in the washing machine. All right. Okay, moving right along. Let's see what we got now. Okay, looks like we've got two rabbits and two washing machines. So we're going to have to pick up one rabbit and let's see. So if we move forward one turn to the left to pick up that rabbit. So that's the left. Okay, we'll pick him up. And then we gotta turn around. So we'll put in two right turns. That's like turning around 180 degrees. We'll move forward. We'll release the rabbit. Turn around two more times and move forward. So that should get us back to the square by the rabbit. Then I want to turn again. And here I'm noticing that it looks like I'm going to be over the objective of 17 blocks. So something's not quite right here, but let's go ahead and continue going. We'll go forward, go right, pick up the rabbit. And now I can really see, yeah, 15 out of 17, and I got to turn and move forward and drop off, so I'm going to be over 17 with this solution, so try and remove some of these here. Let's see, so now forward left catch, and then, yeah, let's try it, let's try taking this rabbit off to the, to the far washing machine and dropping him off in there. Going kind of quickly here. Let's see. So I'm trying here to pick up, put both rabbits into one washing machine. So let's see. Kind of counting spaces, figuring it all out. I'm gonna adjust some of my code because I was dragging and dropping really quickly and they got in the wrong place. Alright, so. 
take up this guy. Move forward. Go in and throw him in that washing machine. Alright, that- oh no, <laughs> the washing machine goes away. Well, that's not good. Okay, so we can't put two rabbits in the same washing machine. Oh, that throws a wrench in the works. Oh, man. Alright, so we gotta think about this again. Um... Well, I'm just gonna... Try and start fresh here. You gotta drag all of these blocks into the trash can. Alright, let's start again. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, we gotta pick up that guy on the left somehow. Yeah, turn left, we'll pick him up. Uh, then... We still gotta turn around to get over to that... Get over to that trash can. Or, not trash can, to get over to the washing machine. Let's, uh, we'll drop him off there. We can't seem to do that in any fewer than seven blocks. So then, how do we... How do we figure this out? Let's see, we get over to the other guy, turn right and pick him up. We're already back at 15. This is... Huh. Alright, so... Clearly there's something wrong with my solution, because... Doing it this way, we're getting... Over the objective of 17 blocks. So, uh... Leave a comment below if you think you've got a solution for this problem. Uh, and... I will keep working through it here. Let's see. I gotta count these blocks and count these movements. Forward, left, catch. Right, right. Forward. Hmm. I don't know if there's... How am I gonna do this in less than 17? Uh, let's start again. Alright, so, forward, yeah. And then, forward again. Yeah, let's try, let's try getting the guy on the, on the end first. Just see if that makes any difference here. So we'll go, we'll pick him up. And we gotta turn around. And then drop him off. So now we're at 9 out of 17, so if we turn around and come back... Okay, 13. Forward again, now we turn and pick him up, and... We're at 17 again. We can't, uh oh, we can't get him into the washing machine without going over 17. Oh, man. Alright, uh... What are we gonna do here? I'm counting spaces, counting movements. I'm trying to figure out just how to get to 17. It's really stumping me here. to where we started. Hey! Trying to see if we can pick up multiple rabbits at the same time. So, trying to see if there's some way that we can do this. <laughs> and clearly that's not working, so let's go ahead and stop that and try again. What went wrong there? Oh, we had blocks in the wrong order. Okay, let's try this. 
Yep. All right, we're gonna try and pick up two rabbits with the same robot. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, here we got one. Going forward and trying to pick that up. Oh, okay, we did pick him up. Well, that's interesting. And we don't have to be facing the washing machine to put them in there. We can't pick up two, but we don't have to be facing the washing machine to put them in there. I wonder if we'll be able to take advantage of that. Hmm. Alright, so we can't pick up two, so we gotta go back to the drawing board here. Alright, so this is we this is as far as we can go to pick up the rabbit. So let's see. Turn around twice and release. So breaking the problem down into smaller parts here to see if there's any way we can do this. Here I was just testing to see if we had to be in the space directly in front of the washing machine to release the rabbit, and the answer to that question is yes. So we know we have to get to the space in front of the washing machine. So let's see. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that you could move backwards. Alright, let's uh... Let's go ahead and rework this a little bit. We'll take those out and just change that to backwards. Now, let's see. Let's see. Turn and then release. Just for fun. Release him sideways. Okay, he still got sucked in there. But that's... I don't think we need that. Let's find out if we need to even be turned. Let's see if we can just release him backwards. Oh yeah, he still got sucked in. Okay, cool. So now we can fix these turns and just have him go forward afterwards. That should work. We'll have him turn and go forward. Pick up that rabbit. And then we should just need to go backwards one space and release him. Okay, let's see if this works. Coming in at Coming in at 13 blocks. I mean, it's really low, but uh, maybe it'll work. Okay, we'll pick him up, go backwards, release the rabbit, go forwards, turn, forward, forward, right, pick up, backwards, and release. All right, we did it. Oh, so it just goes to show, some problems are more difficult than you might think. Alright, oh, new problem. Okay, we've got a vacuum robot. Okay, so we got a, a new block to vacuum. So it looks like fairly simple. This forward vacuum, forward vacuum. Turn, forward, forward vacuum. Alright, I mean, after the last one, that was pretty tricky. That's so why you should always, always make sure you fully understand what the capabilities of your tools are before you try and use them. See, had I realized that I could move forwards and backwards, that problem would have been a lot easier to solve from the get-go. Alright, so this one, we gotta move forwards, and then turn, and then pick up, and then turn, and move forwards, and turn, and pick up, and... Seems like we're repeating a lot of the same actions here, which is kind of tedious to drag and drop all these blocks in. Uh, but, you know, they know best. Let's drag and drop all these blocks in. It'd be really nice if there was a way to copy and paste or repeat actions, but... Oh well, that's this is the game, so let's, uh... Let's go, let's see, so forward, turn, forward, vacuum, left, forward, forward, vacuum, left, forward, forward, vacuum, so on and so forth. Just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Alright, we did it. Okay, not exactly the most fun, dragging and dropping all those blocks. Okay. Um, 
we got now? Pushing a button. Okay, so we have one more thing to, uh, to do here. So one more thing to interact with. We gotta push a button. So forward, forward, turn, push the button, turn back. And then there are two washing machines, so I guess we just have to choose our favorite. Choose the one on the left, I guess. Oh, I got my blocks in the wrong order. All right, we'll try again. Speed it up. Yeah. Now we'll go to the one on the right. Rabbits are looking for food. All right, got a magnetic barrier on top of the sausage because we all know sausages are sensitive to electromagnetic waves and magnetism. So let's see what happens here. We've got one rabbit that we can control and one that we can't with the sausages. So I think if we hit that button, it'll remove the electromagnetic field, maybe. Yeah, okay, and now that rabbit, he's hungry. He wants that sausage. Okay, so we got it. He ate it down in one big gulp, and now, oh, he sees another one, but, oh, he gets sucked in the washing machine. Okay, cool. Moving right along, what's up next? Ah, okay, now our vacuum can also place sausages. So, let's see. I gotta do it in nine blocks. I think we gotta go forward twice, drop a sausage, turn right, go forward, turn left, go forward twice, and drop another sausage. And that ought to do it. Whoop, fix that. Okay, okay. speed up. <laughs> Alright, that worked. Cool. Getting a little bit tired of watching the rabbits walk so slowly, so let's speed things up a little bit here. Here's another one. The rabbit is doing a lot of fairly similar actions. Moving forward through the spaces and hitting a button. So let's go ahead and move forward three spaces, hit a button, and turn. And we'll do that all over again. Move forward three spaces, hit a button, and turn. And then we'll do that all over again. Oh, it looks like I forgot about the turn in there, so... We'll insert that where I missed it up there. Okay, and we'll do that all over again. Turn and move forward. Let's see. Let's get that. Turn, move forward. Get that. Turn. Move forward. We'll hit the button. We'll turn. And move forward. Alright, we did it. So. Oh, look at that. You know, I was complaining about having to repeat a bunch of actions earlier. Now they've given us a block that'll let us do that. In programming, we call these things loops, because it just loops over and over and over again. So this purple block here is what we would call a for loop, because we tell it to, to do something for this many times. So in this case, we are able to, instead of putting four move forward blocks in a row, we can put a, a single move forward block in a loop and have him move forward four times, because the loop is going to loop four times. Then we'll have him turn and move forward another five times. So we'll count those, one, two, three, four, five. So we need to make sure that loop is set to five. And you can see the little rabbit is looping four times. And he's doing it again. Two, three, four... Bye. All right. 
So that's how the for loop works. You tell it how many times you want it to repeat for, and then it'll execute all of the code inside that loop that many times. So here, you can see that there's kind of a repeated pattern in this little zigzag. So if I move forward and turn, and then move forward, yeah, turn left and move forward. Basically, I want to make it look like I'm at the same position, so I want to be in the same kind of condition. So looking forward at that at that rabid de decal on the wall there, and then if I start these steps again, the same operation should occur. So I go forward, turn, forward, turn. So now I'm in the same state, and I'm going to start again. Forward, turn, forward, turn. Same state again. Forward, turn, forward, and we're in the washing machine. All right. And I set the loop counter too many times just because I was too lazy to count there, but I could have set it more precisely. Okay, so we only get three blocks to do this. So, I can see that we've got to repeat something four times, because we've got four rabbits, and each one of these rabbits is going to be attracted to a sausage. So if inside a loop, I move forward one space and then drop a sausage. I should move forward and drop a sausage four times. Let's see if this works. Move forward, drop a sausage. Move forward, drop a sausage. One rabbit down, move forward. Another rabbit down, drop a sausage. Last time through the loop. And there's the fourth sausage and fourth rabbit in the washing machine. All right. So you can see how loops can really clean up your code and make what would have been a many-block program uh, much uh, cleaner. Three blocks for that last one. Okay, so this one... Um, there are a couple ways we could do this. We could turn right here and then use our looping to get through the zigzag. But what I think I'm gonna do is loop move forward for the long straightaway here, and then also um, have a turn at the end of that loop, and then I'm going to be a little sneaky and do what's called a nested loop, because I can see that there are a couple of straights followed by a right hand turn here. And I also know that the rabbits are not able to leave their paths, so... I'm gonna have this loop move forward for... more, more spaces than it needs to. Um, and basically, it will try and execute the steps, but it won't be able to leave the path, so... it will just stay in the same square uh, before it turns, so... You can see we're inside the outside loop here and executing that inner loop. So we are moving forward as many steps as it can here. And now we're going to turn and we're going to execute the outer loop again where we move forward. And this is the part I was talking about. Now we've got to the part we can't step off the path, so it's just going to do nothing on those. And oh dear, <laughs> I have a little bit of a bug in my code there. We'll move that extra block and speed up here. Okay, and turn and forward, and turn and into the washing machine. So, probably exploited the game engine a little bit there. Um, if the game did not allow us to step forward, if it, if it caused us to lose, if we tried to move off the path, then that solution wouldn't have worked, but... Um, I think the game does let you do that, so I went ahead and t took advantage of that. So this solution, I can see that uh, there are three buttons, and they're all separated by two squares. So I'm going to have to move forward two times, turn, hit the button, and then turn back so that I'm facing forward again. So, yeah. And 
second button, and now the third iteration through the loop will hit that third button and then into the washing machine. So, you can see if you can break a problem down into repeatable steps, you can use loops to really make your life a lot easier and make your program a lot easier to read and understand. So, loops are really, really useful for that. Okay, so in this one we've got a giant rabbit and a giant sausage, and I'm looking at it and remembering that zigzag pattern that we did earlier, and you know I can see a zigzag pattern here on this board, so I'm just going to go ahead and try the zigzag from earlier. And yeah, it looks like that will work. Again, remembering that we have to start the loop with the rabbit in the same state that he is now looking in the same direction, otherwise weird things will happen. And we'll hit the button. Let's see if this works. And there are multiple ways this problem could be solved. We could have gone forward in a loop uh, three squares and turned, and then gone forward in a loop four squares and turned and hit the button. But this way seemed like the easiest easiest way for me to do it because we'd already we've already known that zigzags work, so we can reuse some of our knowledge from before. And hit the button and the electromagnetic field goes away and the giant rabbit gets sucked into a giant washing machine. All right. We're moving right along. Okay. So here we've got four buttons and a little cross shape and we've got five blocks to do it in. So clearly there is a repeated action that happens here, moving forward, hitting a button, and then getting back to the center square. So... Let's see, if I move forward and then turn around maybe, turn around and move forward, <laughs> or maybe I'll just turn once, move forward twice, and then hit a button. I'm trying to think of a way here where I'll get back to... I'll, I'll do, move across and then... Well, clearly this isn't working. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's... Try this again. closer to a solution here. Um, Alright, we'll move forward, hit a button, turn and move forward. Um, thinking we have to have an uneven number of steps. So previously, when we did loops, like with the zigzags, we wanted to have an even number of states. We wanted the rabbit to be in the same state, facing in the same direction when we started the loop. But if we do that here, then it will just bounce back and forth between the same uh, same steps. So now I'm trying a nested loop. And full disclosure, I was playing this at like one in the morning, and I was pretty tired. So cut me some slack. Uh, <laughs> I was not on my A game. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to just step through it in my head here and move forward and then hit the button and turn. Um, gonna work, so let's see here. If I go forward, hit it, and then, oh yeah, remember, we can move backwards 
and then turn. What I said earlier, you'll see the rabbit is in a different state at the beginning of the loop, so he can hit all four buttons. I just forgot that you can move backwards again like I did earlier. But fortunately, I remembered a lot sooner than I did earlier. Okay, now we're moving into the wonderful world of conditional logic. So they've just given us a green block here called an if block. And what that'll let the rabbit do is basically test a condition. So um, we can see we've got this if block, which will let us test a condition, which is that sort of brown block in that. So if the rabbit can move forward, then move forward. Uh, otherwise, uh, hmm, let's see. Let's see what happens here. Okay. So if he can move forward, he will, and then he'll keep moving forward, and then turn right. Is that right? Let's see. Yeah, I'll we'll just, okay, so here we go, turn, move forward, oh, he turned, he turned way too early, and now he can't move forward. Okay, so, what happened there? Uh, of course, because we put that at the end of the loop there, that's gonna, it, that's gonna execute every iteration through the loop, so that's not gonna work. So now, let's see, okay, so if we can move right, let's try turning right. Otherwise, and, and then we'll move forward. Does that make sense? Yeah, let's see, okay, so we'll move forward, because we can't move right. And now we can move right, okay, so we have an unnecessary there, we'll get rid of him, let's try again, alright. Forward, 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 we can turn right, so we do. Forward, 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 we turn right. Forward, <laughs> forward, forward. Okay, so it looks like this is going to work. Hooray! Okay, good news. Let's move on. Okay, so we've got different colored blocks here and a vacuum. So let's see. Obviously we're going to need to loop. And we'll just loop for as many times as we can. And then if we can turn left, we want to turn left. But I notice, first of all, you can see that all of the items are on spaces where you need to turn. So we'll go ahead and vacuum and then turn. And then we'll do the same thing for the right. We'll vacuum and then turn right. And then I think we should just need to move forward and we should be done. Let's see. Forward, 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 vacuum. Okay, that looks good. And then turn forward, forward. We can turn left, so we'll vacuum and then turn left. Forward, forward forward. We can turn right from vacuum and then move forward. Keep on going. Go vacuum and move forward. And oh, okay. So I guess because those blocks are there, we can't actually turn there even though there is a square underneath it. So what we'll do is be a little cheeky here and we'll just have the vacuum vacuum every square because you don't have to be over something to vacuum and that way we'll save on blocks as well. Uh, so it's not the most elegant solution but it's, it's fewer blocks than the previous solution so I call it a win. Alright, so in this case, what do we got? Looks like we just need to get to the washing machine, so we just need a loop and then 
an if statement to turn. If we can move left. Yeah, so turn left and otherwise move forward. That, that should be all there is to it. See if 15 iterations is going to be enough here. Give it a shot. Okay, moving pretty slowly here, going through the loop. Little rabbit stepping along. Speed him up a little bit there. And... Alright, we made it. Okay, that was not too bad. So now they're telling us about those colored tiles. So they've given us a new condition here to check for, and that is to check for the color of the tile that we're standing on. So we're going to say if we're standing on an orange tile that we want to turn left. And otherwise, we just want to move forward. So that ought to do it. Go ahead and move forward. And yep. That was that. Was that. Okay, so now they're telling us about my, uh, the nested for loop that I used earlier. So they're wanting us to nest loops, but I don't think I want to do that, uh, just because it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to nest a loop in this situation. I mean, they would probably want you to nest a move forward and then turn inside a larger loop, so you'd have... Uh, two loops. One would be doing the moving forward, and the other one would then be handling the turning. But it, you don't really need that here, I don't think. So we just need to... It's very similar to the earlier program, where we just move forward, vacuum, move forward and vacuum, just for turning based on the color of the tile instead of whether or not a space is available. So we'll pick that up there. And hey, we are so close. We ended one step too soon, but let's see what happened there was we vacuumed and then we moved forward. So we moved forward onto the final square and then we couldn't vacuum any longer because the loop had finished iterating. So what we need to do is add another vacuum block onto the end, just uh, rerunning that because I wasn't sure what happened, so let's see. Yeah, you can see we get to the move forward and that's the last iteration through the loop, so... Clearly, we just have one item left to vacuum, so if we drop the vacuum block on the end there, run through it. The times like this, I wish the game moved a little bit faster than three times real speed, but that's okay. If you're uh, enjoying the show, uh, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. The idea is to kind of, you know, have fun going through these fairly basic coding games and uh, try to get an idea of the thought process of a software engineer and talk about some high-level programming concepts. Alright, so we're gonna need a loop, obviously, to handle movement and turning, but also... Now we have the ability to vacuum if we're over, over something, so... It looks like we can have a pretty basic... Uh, move forward three and turn kind of uh, situation for the movement. 
and this is where that nested loop will come in handy, because I need to move forward and turn uh, three times, but I want to do that a total of just a bunch of times, basically. So I need to move forward three times and then turn, and I need to do that a total of three times. But I also need to have that code in there to back in the, the items, so... Go, moving forward, and vacuuming, and then turning, and now we're moving forward again, and vacuuming, and we are done. So you can see in that case, the nested for loop, the inner loop was handling the movement and the vacuuming, and then outside of that inner loop, but still in the outer loop, we had the turn. So that let the the robot vacuum move forward and vacuum as many times as it needed to, and then once it got to the end of all the moving forward and vacuuming, it knew to turn right, and then it started moving forward again on the next iteration through that outer loop when it got into the inner loop. Alrighty, let's see, what do we have now? Okay, it looks pretty complicated. Got some colored blocks and some buttons. I do notice right away that very nicely they've put the same colored blocks on the buttons that we need to turn the same direction in. So that I think is going to be important for solving this problem. So let's think. We've got the overall movement. We got to move forward, and turn right, and then move forward, and turn right, and then move forward to get to the final washing machine. But we are going to have to hit some buttons along the way. So in that move forward loop, I think we're going to have to check for what color tile we're standing on, and then turn either left or right and hit the button, and then turn back. So let's go ahead and see. Okay, we have the outer loop. Mm, well, let's go ahead and get the move forward part done first. Let's see. So. Moving forward. That looks good. Alright, so. Yeah, whoops. Put an it block in here. And. Yeah, it worked on an orange block. And I want to turn left hit the button and then turn right to get us back facing forward. Then, let's see, if we can turn right, we'll do that. Okay. So we still need to do the purple block. So let's get that set up. So if we're on a purple tile, turn right, and then hit, and then turn. Okay, that should be good. And that ought to do it. I guess we don't need an outer loop after all. Okay, so we're on orange, so he turns left, he hits the button, turns right, the electric grid goes down and off he goes. And we can turn right, so he does. Goes forward. Tile, so I'm just going to execute that code inside that if block. The electric grid goes down and it continues. And it can turn right, so we can move the moves forward. Orange brick, so it's going to turn left, hit, and then turn right. And then move forward again. Cool, alright. Okay. So now they've introduced a new kind of loop, which lets us loop until a condition is true. Uh, in computer science, we refer to this kind of loop as a, a while loop. Um, because basically we're telling the computer, or in this case we're telling the rabbits, to do something while this condition is either true or false. So here, basically, I am using an inner loop to say while you can move forward, move forward, 
So when you can no longer move forward, turn right. So you can see he can move forward, but when he can't move forward anymore, he turns right. Now I just had two few iterations on my outer loop, so go ahead and increase that a little bit. And now he made it to the washing machine. Alright. So while loops are very useful. Um, because you can evaluate whether or not our condition is true, and you don't have to try and count how many times it should happen. So, um, it's like earlier, you know, I was setting the iteration to 15. I didn't have to count to 15 anymore. I could just uh, um, do something while a condition was was no longer true or while well, condition was true, so very useful to be able to do that and not have to count a bunch of times to figure out how many times your code should execute. So in this case, something weird is happening here. Um, let's try and figure this out. Um, let's see, so repeat until goal is not reached. Repeat while not yet okay. So that, I mean, so why isn't that working? Um, oh, I see. So, in real programming, if you have an error in your code, like I did there, you notice I didn't have a condition on the second if block? I would not be able to hit the play button there. The, the program would have said, there's an error in your code, I can't play. But in this case, he just moved forward one step and then stopped. Uh, so just a, a small a small bug in my code there um, where I forgot to put a condition in my if statement. So here I'm going to say repeat until the goal is reached. And the goal in this case is to suck up all of the all of the good items. We don't want to suck up bonds here, so... Let's say if you can move forward... Or no, if you can move right, then turn right. And then... If you... Can move left, move... Left, otherwise... Let's see, if you're over a rabbit's object, not a bomb, then put a vacuum. Okay, uh, so I'm over the, uh, over the limit here. 12 out of 9. Oh, look at that. We've only got right turns in here. I don't need to have that block of left code in there at all. Okay, 9 out of 9. That's what I did. Suck up the sauce. Suck up the ducky. Suck up the toilet paper and the plunger. Keep on going. And the goggles. Alright, we did it. So, just goes to show, you can have a bunch of code that would work, but it's not always necessary. You can have too much code for a solution. Alright, so, just like before, we're going to use the loop until the goal is reached. And now we want to move forwards, and then we're going to want to have code to handle turning both the ways in this example. So on purple, we want to turn right, and on orange, we want to turn left. And that should do it. Let's see. So move forward, turn, move forward, turn. So far, so good. Okay. Keep on going. Keep on going. And we, oh, we made it to the goal. Or, okay, we didn't. What's wrong there? Oh, <laughs> we have to. We're playing as the robot. We have to pick up that rabbit and deliver him to the uh, deliver him to the washing machine. Okay, so let's pick him up, and then at the very end, no, let, let's let's just add another block here. Let's do it properly. Uh, if we're in front of a washing machine, we'll release the rabbit. So I could have cut a little bit of a corner there and just put the release block at the end of the program because I knew he was going to end at the uh, 
at the washing machine. Okay, something's gone wrong there. So what happened there was the code to pick up the rabbit was executing after the code to turn. So the robot was turning when it was in front of the rabbit, and it never actually saw that there was a rabbit in front of it. Okay, now, because that if rabbit is in front block is first, it will pick up the rabbit. So the order of execution, just like in math, you know, your, your order of operations, the order of operations in, in programming matters as well. Alright, so now they've introduced a new block called the if-else block. And what this will let us do is execute code if something is true, just like the if block, but then we'll also be able to execute code if it's not true. So. In that top portion, if it's over a rabbit's object, we want to vacuum. Otherwise, we want to move forward. So, you can see what it's doing. If it's over a rabbit's option, it moves, it vacuums. Otherwise, it moves forward. And um, that's how to complete that level. Okay, so now they're telling us that we can drop sausages on buttons. So, we're going to have to detect if we are over a button. And if we are, then we're going to have to drop a sausage. So we'll repeat until the goal is reached. And we want to move forward. And then, let's see, if we're over a button, drop a sausage, otherwise move forwards. Um, Let's see, where do we go from here? Oh. And then if we can turn right, we want to turn. Or left, yeah. But we also have some right turns, so let's put that in. Okay, this looks good. Let's give this a shot. Okay, so we're moving forward, we're moving forward. Okay, we're on top of a button, so we'll drop a sausage. Now, we're still on top of a button. Oh, okay, so because we were still on top of a button, it didn't move forward anymore. So now, let's see, we've put a move forward block in on there. So if it's on top of a button, it'll drop a sausage and then move forward. Um, the more astute viewers will probably recognize that we don't really need the if-else block here. We could have just had an if block. Um, but, you know, live and learn. <laughs> In this situation, now it's, when it isn't on top of a button, it's vacuuming and then moving forward. So, uh, now it's on top of some stuff, so it's gonna vacuum it up, keep on going. And it looks like this is going to work. We get on top of a button, drop the sausage, and back it up. Okay, so that worked. It wasn't optimal. We didn't really need that if-else block in there, but, you know, we did. We put it there. It worked. Alright. Challenge. Can you solve this level? Good question. Okay, let's see. So we got a board with a bunch of objects on it, purple on one end, orange on the other. So, do we have, okay, yeah, good, we got the, we got the repeat until loop, and repeat until the goal is reached. So, I think what we basically want to do here is just zigzag across the entire board. So, I was going to say move forward, and then if we are on top of an orange tile, then we want to turn right, and then we want to, okay, yeah, if I'm on top of a purple tile, we want to turn left, but if we just turn right, then we're still going to be on top of an orange tile, right? So we're going to want to move forward. And then we'll be on top of another orange tile. But we'll be one row over, so it should now zigzag back and forth. 
So now all we need to do is handle the vacuuming. Um, okay. Ah. Okay, so here you can see, now that we put the move forward step first, what's gonna happen is it's gonna move forward, and then it's gonna detect if it's on top of the tile, so... There we go. Putting that forward step first means that we could save on the forward steps in those if statements. So, pretty cool there. And then the last if statement, just if on top of the rabbit's object, vacuum it up, and then we're done. Alrighty, pretty, pretty, pretty neat little solution there. Okay. Let's see what's up next. Level 32. We got buttons, we got electric grids, we got items that we need to pick up with our vacuum robot. How are we going to do this? Well, let's think. We got to move forward. We got to detect if we're over an item. If we are, we got to vacuum. If we're over a button, we got to drop a sausage. If we can turn right, we got to turn right. We are above any object. Drop. Okay, okay, let's see if we can do this. Does the game count a button as an object? Let's find out. We may be able to save on a couple of steps here and consolidate. If not, then well, maybe we might not, uh, we might need to add another block, but let's see. Let's see if buttons count as objects. If they do, then We've saved on a couple of a couple of statements here. Alrighty. Oh no. Okay. So buttons do not count as objects. So lesson learned. So we're gonna have to add a special if statement just for buttons. And we'll drop a sausage if we're over a button. All right. We'll speed that up. That should do it. We'll vacuum if we're over an object. We'll drop a sausage if we're over a button, and we'll turn right if we can turn right. And we will do that until we have completed our goal. Alright. There we go. Very cool. We will soon know all of the coding secrets. <laughs> yeah. You know, five years of uh, college and grad school and I still don't know all of the coding secrets. But, uh... Well, hey, it looks like we've beaten the game. Uh, here we are in the sandbox. Looks like we could do all kinds of fun things here, but um, I'm going to call it a day and say thank you very much for watching. Um, if, you, if you enjoyed uh, Rabbit's Coding, check it out. It is free on Uplay. If you enjoyed watching me solve the puzzles and struggle with some of them and talk you through my thought process, then uh, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, this has been a Software Engineer Plays, and thank you very much.